We received a question about inserting subassemblies into assemblies in a Libre. Let's go through that. Here I have an assembly and I have one part in it right now. This would be known as the cylinder block. And I'll make sure that we have it anchored in place so it doesn't move around on us. How do we get a subassembly that goes with this part? Well, I have this insert design option here, which we'll use later in the video. Uh, this, of course, we can insert a part, sheet metal part, or subassembly and uh, made it to whatever we have currently in our assembly. But if we can do that, then why do we have the option to insert a part, sheet metal part, and subassembly if we can do that from insert design? Well, inserting a part, sheet metal part, and subassembly from these three buttons here actually allow us to insert empty things, right? So if I click on part, then I am actually looking at the part environment ribbon now and not one that is concerned with assemblies. And my part that I've already had in my assembly goes more transparent to communicate to us that we're not really working with this right now. It's just in here, almost like as a reference in our part modeling environment. Now I can begin uh, making a new part. So I can select a plane make a simple sketch for the purposes of demonstration, deactivate and extrude. Now with this new part, I can go back to edit my assembly by right clicking and saying edit part or subassembly. And now I can place this part anywhere. But I also have the unique advantage of being able to model my part right with my other parts of my assembly there so I can reference parts of my assembly. For instance, I'll edit my part here. I can say I take the coincident constraint and make my sketch coincident with part of my assembly. So if something updates, this coincident constraint will update my sketch as needed. So when I can make parts in the context of other parts, it saves a lot of updating time if I know the relationships I want to have between them. So even if something gets moved around or adjusted, uh, my part will always be updated to sit within where I put it. And we have more on that in the description. But let's talk some more about subassemblies. I've been able to create a part, which I'll now delete because I do not need. I can choose my subassembly button right here. And now I'm creating a new subassembly. And so you'll see that the ribbon looks the same, but this is now in the context of the subassembly we are creating, not in the context of our upper level assembly we're creating. And so I can insert the parts that I would like. And these are the parts of my subassembly that I'll be building out here. I'll add some constraints. All right, so now I've been able to make this subassembly. I'll right click on my top level and change it back to editing my assembly. And now let's add some constraints. I'll add, uh, I'll add this face here and here to make sure that our crankshaft rotates in the correct way. And I'll make sure that our piston is co-centric with the cylinder block wall. You'll notice that we have an error here though, and that's because we can't um, rotate this in a way that satisfies all of the mates that we've set out to do. I need to make this flexible so I'm able to move my subassembly, and I can do that by uh, going to my new assembly here, and we'll say, I, I should close this dialog box first, and we'll say make flexible. Now, when I go to add my constraint, we're able to move it no problem. And we're able to rotate the crankshaft just as we would want to. So that is a way that we can make subassemblies right inside of our top level assembly. Now I'm gonna click the save button and you can tell that I have a few things to save. I have my new assembly too, which is my top level assembly I've just made. 
and then I have my subassembly and I can select my folder. And I'll say OK. Once that's all saved, I can create a new assembly. So I'm in making the same assembly that we started with here. It'll make sure that it's anchored. I have my cylinder block. Of course, I can choose this insert design. And for any subassembly that I've already made, I can simply go find the one that I just made and insert it. I'll make sure that I make it flexible. and add a constraint here and here and I have effectively the exact same assembly that I just made using the other method. So we have multiple methods to add sub-assemblies into our top-level assemblies. Hope it was helpful and thank you for watching.